And let me know if everybody can hear me. And let me know if you can see the chart. Did you grab it? You should see a chart of the spy. Let me know if you do. Kathy, is it good? All right, let's look at the market over here. My computer is very slow because I taped the webinar and I think it's bogging it down now. It's downloading it. So my charts are gonna be like extra slow, but let's just see. I just want to see where we bounced off of here today. <clears throat> and there you have it. Okay, so let's go over this. I don't know where we gap tomorrow, but we're going to gap up. I, here, here's a call for tomorrow. Right now. Here, 536. We're either going to, if we gap neutral, we could gap neutral tomorrow. Neutral meaning neutral meaning we open near the close of today. Neutral open higher. Gap up higher. Gap down higher, unless it's a huge gap down and that just isn't happening. So the most likely thing the market's going to do tomorrow is gap neutral or up and rally. And depending on if we actually gap up or neutral is going to determine the action for the day here, like tomorrow, because we do have to get up over this area here. And that may not happen in one day's worth of trading. Now, today is only Tuesday. I think it's very likely the market makes a new high yet this week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We will make a new high before the holiday, though, which is eight days away. Eight days away before Memorial Day holiday. The market will make a new high before then. I wouldn't even put it past the market to do it this week, but I'm just saying... This does have to get up on over itself, and I don't know if we have a large gap up tomorrow. Like, I think that's what it would take to do it in one day. Otherwise, neutral, rally, gap up, small rally, and then follow through, and then get over the high. But I don't know if it then, with the timing, how that plays out to be yet this week. But the market will make a new high. Next target is 215 over the high. Does anyone have any questions about the market? I mean, I, I just wanted to look and see how we closed here today. We, we were strong. We came in, we just fell quickly in the morning and bounced. And again, this is not a, this is a bearish gap. This is not a gap that I would have shortened, but very difficult to go long here as well. If you're long the market, you should be long this like from, from a long time ago. Uh, but the market is still a long, just not a great entry here to go long today. All right. Does anyone have any specific questions about the market? Ask me now. I have a chart up. I'm talking about it. You had to aggressively buy the market this morning out of the gate, which, you know, I don't think I would have done. And again, I like to short, but let's just see what time it actually set up. It did set up early, though. 9.45. Yeah, you could have gone long the market 9.45. It would have been very aggressive. You could have waited until 10, 10, 15. But you could have actually bought the market at 9.45. That would have just been very aggressive, though, considering the fact that it got down. But if you did, you, you had a nice move in there. This would have been very aggressive to do. You almost would have had to know the number to do it at, to be honest with you, or just waited. Really, here. Here's where you could have bought it. Here, here's, here's If I had done this, which I didn't because I shorted, here, this was the place to buy. 209, and that's why this went poof like that. But I definitely would have given this probably a cushion of like 208.50. So it'll be very interesting to see. It sounds insane, but the summer is setting up to be very bullish in this market. And that'll be very interesting because a lot of people actually have that thing, you know, what is it, sell in May and go away or whatever it is. I mean, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But I'm just telling you that most people are long stuff and that there's that saying out there, sell them in and go away, go away for the summer. But, you know, summer is a good trading season and earning season. And I trade all year long. So there's tons of stuff to do in the summer. Again, it's about quality, picking the right things to do. But I think that's going to be a complete and utter misnomer and misstatement to top off this year. 
of the summer of 2015 for the year. And it'll be very interesting because if that's the case, people are going to really chase them going long the market then late in the summer into the fall of this year, which will continue to push the market and make it rise, meaning retail traders or traders or novice traders will miss the bullish move in the summer after selling out of things now and then come in late end summer of beginning of fall and that's what will keep the market pushing through higher than into the end of the year which the market's going to do anyways but i'm just saying that will give it more even more of a lift then in that period yes yeah, so you have to be a bullish summer because we could have gotten over this area here in spring and I thought that we would. I thought we'd make a new high in April. We didn't. Again, timing is very challenging for long-term stuff. I don't have to worry about that as a day trader. But I do know the numbers. And they, they get hit. So we could have done it in the spring. We didn't. We're going to do it in the summer, which is crazy. Because most people say sell in May and go away. Which means that people that think the market's done rallying will miss this big move when it happens and gets over the area. And it is setting up to blow over the area. I mean, it's just setting up to blow like nobody's business. And I don't know when that happens, but I think it could happen before the Memorial Day holiday. And if not, it's happening in the summer. No chance of failure. Anyone have any questions at all about SPY or anything else that's gapping right now? I really didn't look at the stuff for tonight. I really just usually wait till the morning. But I'll look at something if anybody wants to be looking at anything. Or if not, I'll let everybody go. Any questions about it? Anything, any gaps, anything tonight, the market, the gap class, anything. Anything you want to ask me, you've got me here. 541. You have my full attention. <laughs> All right. Well, have a wonderful evening, everyone. If you're interested in the course, it's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I still have spaces available if you want to sign up. And then you can trade and be in the room then this earning season and for the for the summer period. It's going to be a very, very bullish time in the market overall. But stuff that's crap, people are going to dump. And, and they're going to run because people are going to dump them. Because when the market proves that it's higher, which I already know and I can already see, it's stuff that people don't want to be in anymore they're going to sell. And that's going to create some nice shorts in the summer as well. Like... Like in the next two weeks and then into June. Just for those of you that haven't been following me, I called the market higher here when it didn't look like it was. I called the market higher here, even though it had this massive drop off. I said, we're still higher here. We did it. I called the market higher here. You can go back and watch every market video I've done on YouTube for the last three years if you want. Every time the market has done something that has looked like it's bearish, I have called it higher. And how I've been able to do that because I rate the gaps. You could rate the gaps in the market. You could have rated the bearish gap in the market today to determine if you should have shorted it or bought it. I rate the gaps, bullish gaps, bearish gaps, I'm rating them. And I can tell the ones that are the good ones. The ones that you could trade. The ones that are going to provide the follow through or break the chart. And there's nothing bearish in this chart. And that's the last thing I'm going to say then. Uh, is that the bottom line is, oh here, Viv has a question and then I'll answer his question and then I'll make my point. Uh, again, the margin requirement has to do, you want all those questions are questions for the broker. Email me, Vit, I will refer you to brokers and you can talk to them about how much money you have to put up an account, how much buying power and margin they're going to give you. There's no requirement though, as far as to trade the strategy. You could take 50 shares of NVIDIA if you want. Okay, I use these examples to show you the examples if you wanted to make $1,000 a day. There's no, like, you, you don't have to take any set amount, okay, just so that you know that, all right? As far as success percentage to success ratio, I think that's your second question there. For day trading, it's somewhere between 70-75%. For overnights long term for my calls, which again, I have the swing trade letter, it's like over 90 and I didn't, I didn't set out to make this strategy to do long-term trades. But as it turns out, it actually works extremely well for long-term positioning and trading. But you have to know how to read the gaps that break the chart. You have to know how to read long-term trends, which I teach in the trends class. And taking overnights, you have to take less size because you're at more at risk because you don't really have a stop in. So know that. So the percentage you use in my system for overnights is higher, but the risk is more unless you do an option. 
okay? Now, if you want to day trade, you have a fixed risk on each trade, and my win ratio is between 70 and 75. So you will take some losses. Like I told you, WFM didn't work. But the reality is you make money so far past the amount that you do that you should really only still have two to three losses on any given uh, loss days on any given month. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't have three loss days in a row. I mean, some people, some people lose every day in the week. But I mean, some people have like three loss days in a row. If I, if I, if I lose three days in a row, like that just doesn't happen to me at this point. But if it would, like I probably would have like a cold. <laughs> you know, um, YouTube videos. Kathy, can you put my YouTube video link in there? Go to the stock swoosh on YouTube. Just put in YouTube and then just go up stock swoosh. Just put in stock swoosh on YouTube and I'll plop it up. And there's one last thing I want to say in here tonight for everyone. And this is for people. This is, I'm just, I'm just telling you this. Like if you have money in a 401k or retirement or something like that and you're, you're like, what should I do? Or you're, you know, you're in stocks overnight and you're like, you're thinking the market's really going to come in and you're starting to drink the Kool-Aid that everyone's saying is going to crash and it's just going too high mm -hmm. because really here's the rally. But I'm telling you, it's still higher. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I am an expert in shorting. Now, whether you believe that or not, I'm telling you, take it a carte blanche for now. You can watch all my videos and be in the room for the trial. But I am an expert in shorting. I mean, I love to short. I'm like the queen of shorts. And I am saying that there is not weakness in the market. Now, if someone that is extremely good at reading weakness on a regular basis does not see it in the SPY or the QQQs, it's not there. Because the moment I would see it, I would say it. And you know what? I could market my class even more so if I screamed and yelled and jumped up and down that the market was going to crash. But I am true to my knowledge of how to trade and what I see and take everything that comes out of my mouth seriously. Whether I take the long-term trades or not, everything I say when I'm calling the market, even if I'm not in it as a trade, I'm taking seriously to tell you and advise you so you have faith and trust in me because I need to be accurate and I need to be authentic and true to what I know. Because I could market my business crazily if I said the market was going to crash like everyone else is saying. I'm telling you when it's not. And I'm telling you, the common sense says that if you have somebody that's great, I mean an expert at reading shorts and weakness, and she is saying to you that it is not there, listen. All right. You can trade my method while having your day job. That's what everybody does then that is brand new because you obviously cannot quit your job until you're making enough money to support yourself. So... The bottom line is that because the gap method happens quickly and you're getting in the trades between 9.30 and 10, you could be out by 10, 10, 15, 10.30. And therefore, you could go on to your other job or trade at your job for that one hour period, depending on the time zone you're in, if you're in Eastern time zone or whatever. I don't know what time zone are you in, but, but the answer is yes. I have people that are transitioning right now. They're in the room. They come in. They're in the room. They do the one train or two trains, and then, then they sign out. I mean, every everybody's gone. I closed the room out by 11. And, and actually, to be honest with you, most of the room is gone by 1030. There are some people that are full-time traders in there with me, but most of the people just sign out by 1030. As soon as we're out and done, they're out. I talk and lecture between 1030 and 11 if there's something to talk about. But most people just take the trades, make the money, then go on. Go on with their day, pick up the kids, go to the gym, whatever they have to do. And I have people in very different time zones. Some are in Hawaii, some are in the East Coast, some are on the West Coast, some are like across the world, China, England, Australia, so it depends if it's night or day for you, but you could definitely have a job and trade at the same time. That's how you make the transition. You have to prove to yourself you can do it before you do quit your job, but it is possible during the time you're learning and you're making money when you're doing it in the morning, it will help you give the conviction. The trading method I teach is a part-time job really as far as the hours, not the money, but the hours. So what is so great about gaps, okay, is that 80% of the move happens in the morning. And that means that the stock itself, if, you, if it goes further and you happen to miss it, it you're not going to have a crisis over it because you made money for the morning move and you went on with your day. And what I have found and the reason that I stopped trading in the afternoon is that often I would trade in the morning, make my money. I mean, this is, I've been doing this for years. Even, even when I haven't figured everything out, I was trading and making money in the morning. 
And then I would keep trading and I would give it back. And it was insane because I would be looking for other stuff to do and trying to make more and doing this and doing that. It's not about trying to make more. You know how you make more? You start taking 5,000 shares in a trade and then you let that sucker drop a dollar and you're up five grand. That's how you make more. That's how you do it. Okay. You do it by taking more risks. You do it by risking a thousand dollars in a trade or 1500 which I've done in some of my trades, or more. You do it by taking more risk. You don't do it by doing more trades, and you do it by the sizing, but you can't take size in trades and take that risk until you know what the heck you were doing, and you prove to yourself that you know what you're doing by doing it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you do it. I mean, sometimes, there's been, sometimes I'm so in love with the gap, and I call it, I call it an NCOF, but I'm so in love with it that I sometimes take that, and I, 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 I'm not even exactly sure how much I'm, up, I'm risking because I'm so certain that it will go. <laughs> but that's only when I'm like, absolutely know that that's a good one. That, that happens though a couple times a month. I mean, there's three, four days a month that you will have these ones that I talk about in the room that I'm so certain it will go and go to the target. So you, you have to have a fi fixed amount of risk you can afford now. You start as a beginner. You take the class, you trade, you make the money you can, you keep your job. Once you're making the money by increasing your risk over time, however long it takes you to do that, then you can quit. I don't know your learning curve. Does it have to be long? No, no, it doesn't have to be long at all. It can be short. If you're very smart and hear everything I'm saying and learn everything and pick it up in the class, you could you could go right in the next day and start training and you could, for the first week, you can risk 100 bucks, then risk 200, then risk 300. Every week you can step it up. But I don't know you. I don't know your learning curve. And so everyone is a different learning curve with the market and with my information in the class. And so that's something that you have to discern after you take the class. And trust me, you will. You will. I mean, I get emails after the class. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, you, 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 you will know. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kathy, for your help. Any other questions from anyone else? Some good discussions here. Some good questions. Thank you, PRP. I don't know what I'm looking at tomorrow. I don't I have no idea. I'm just, I've had a long day. I've been up since 5 a.m. going to the gym. I'm just going to relax, have a glass of wine here, see what I get in the morning. If you're interested in the trial, though, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Have a great night, everyone. Email me if you'd like the information about the class. Leo, stop doing gap fills. I'm telling you, think about what I said, common sense. All right? And we can talk more about this later. All right, have a good night, everyone. You're welcome.